This is the brand new Garmin HRM200. A heart rate strap that on its surface looks pretty much like every other heart rate strap out there. Except underneath the covers, it's actually quite a bit different from the Garmin HRM Dual that it replaced from some six plus years ago. In this review, I'm gonna dive into what's new about it, why you may or may not care about those new differences, how it works in real life, accuracy, and everything else you need to know. It's as simple as that. So the first thing to know about the HRM200 is it has a removable pod. Again, not unlike some of the past HRM straps like the HRM from Dual in the classic heart rate strap from Garmin. However, this pod has a button on it and a light on it. The first time Garmin's had either of those two things. And again, while other straps have had buttons and lights on them, this button and light is actually quite a bit different than the past. In fact, there's no other strap on the market that does what this does. And while that doesn't matter today, it's very much gonna matter in the next couple years. You see, this strap adds both authentication as well as security or encryption to your heart rate data. And for a lot of people, obviously myself included, I don't care if someone is snooping on my heart rate data at the gym, but for better or worse, a bunch of directives are coming into place starting this summer in the EU that require you to be able to go ahead and authenticate as well as encrypt your personal data wirelessly. Thus, Garmin has to start releasing new products to comply with that. And in the case of a heart rate strap, the only way to do that is to have a button to manually confirm your intention to broadcast your data. And we're gonna get back to all the encryption bits and whether or not you need it or don't need it and all that kind of stuff in just a second. But if you flip over the pod, it's also got a new design on the back that's more kid friendly. Again, this is also driven by regulatory changes across the world in the last couple years, primarily around so-called coin cell batteries or button batteries. Those batteries, small children can swallow and do incredible damage, including death. Uh, and so a lot of governments have basically put in place things that require you to have tools to remove it. And now normally you might use a screwdriver or something like that. That's not gonna work here. But what's far more clever is that the strap right there, this little piece, you can put it in there and then unlock it. Uh, and now I point out that it is not easy to unlock. Uh, even as an adult male, uh, it takes a fair bit of torque or force to be able to do that. I try with both my eight-year-old as well as my seven-year-old daughters to see if they could do this, uh, both from like a logistical standpoint as well as from a strength standpoint. Even after I showed them how to do it, neither could actually get it opened up. Thus, a two-year-old is more than safe. Once you do have that opened up, it's a standard CR2032 coin cell battery inside. Now, the one last thing to note from a hardware standpoint on this is that it actually comes in two strap sizes. The pod is the same across both of them, but here's the two strap sizes right there based on your chest size. Essentially an extra small through small and then a medium through extra large strap. Oh, and then two more minor items here. The price for this is 79 bucks, uh, a little bit more expensive than the current HRM Dual here, which runs about like 59 bucks in terms of real world pricing, but more about comparisons later on in the video. Uh, also battery life with that coin cell battery is roughly one year. So. When it comes to pairing, by default, out of the box, as of January 2025, it's gonna be in so-called open configuration. The thing to know is there's essentially two configurations with this strap. There's so-called open and secure. Open is just like every other heart rate strap on the market for the last 20 years. It is openly broadcasting your data, in this case, on both AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart. This has three Bluetooth Smart concurrent channels as well as unlimited AMP Plus channels. In that open configuration, it'll work with any device out there on the planet, uh, from a bike computer to a watch to apps, uh, you name it, it's gonna work just fine, just like the other heart race trap. Uh, and you can see which mode it is by just simply tapping this button right here and it'll blink the LEDs. If it blinks that green light three times, that means it's in open mode. And if it blinks it two times, that means it's in so-called secure mode. And secure mode means that it's basically both authenticating as well as encrypting that traffic. Uh, so the authentication happens by you pressing to confirm this button the very first time you pair with the new device. And then the encryption happens at the layer basically transmitting between the strap and the device. But again, don't get too confused by that. By default, this ships in open configuration, just like every other strap in the world, and you can pair it up like every other strap in the world unless you have a brand new Garmin device, in which case they are holding themselves, for better or worse, to a higher standard, which requires you to go ahead and confirm that initial pairing. So let's just walk through how the pairing process works, starting off with like a newer Garmin watch in open mode. Uh, in that case here, you're gonna long hold the button for four seconds to start pairing mode, and then on your device, you're gonna search for heart rate sensors. Once it's found it, it's gonna go ahead and give you a notice that says, hey, we found this, but you're in open mode. And then here's what open mode means in terms of encryption and authentication. Assuming you say, sure, I don't really care about my heart rate data uh, being unencrypted, then you go ahead and just confirm that pairing and you're off and going. Uh, now, interestingly, in the settings of the newer Garmin devices that be able to show both of those two modes, you can see that it has both open AMP Plus as well as open Bluetooth Smart. And you can in fact switch between those two different configurations. Now, once it's set up, again, in that open mode, it's like 
like every other heart rate strap since the beginning of time, it works the same way. I've been successfully using it with numerous watches, uh, a whole slate of bike computers on a bunch of different rides without any problems, as well as apps like Peloton and Zwift and Trainer Road, all without any issues whatsoever. Again, all that works just fine. So, Let's then talk about the secure mode because that's again the thing that's here. And I'll link down the different EU directives down below. That's a whole separate discussion for maybe later in the week as to what's going on there. But the long and the short of it is that starting sometime this summer, likely, and then continuing over the next few years, the different initiatives come in place. Uh, there's basically a requirement to at least notify you that your data is open, if not outright encrypt that data. Uh, so to switch modes, it's super easy. You just double tap this and it goes from open mode to secure mode. Uh, there's a little chart right here that shows all the different colors coatings. The chart may look kind of intimidating, but honestly, there's only like four things you actually have to know here. Uh, simply double tap it to change modes, the two mode types being open and secure, and then pairing mode by long holding down that button. So we're now in secure mode. We've double tapped it. We, and then we're going to long press this for four seconds to start the pairing mode. At this point in the Garmin watch, you're going to see the HRM 200, just like you would in the past. Again, no difference there, uh, except behind the scenes, it's completing that basically authentication that happens as well as setting up that secure channel. It'll then go through that pairing process, just like it did in the past. And at the very end, you'll now have a paired sensor that shows it's in secure mode. You'll notice that secure mode is only in Bluetooth Smart. It is not an AMP Plus uh, because Bluetooth is capable of doing that both authenticated as well as encrypted channel. Now, from this point forward, there's no difference in how the heart rate sensor acts or uses or whatever the case is. You can have multiple concurrent encrypted pairings without any problem. Again, it's identical from a data standpoint. It's gonna show your data uh, on the device without any problems whatsoever. However, that secure mode, right now, the only devices I can find that work with it are the Garmin devices that support it. So basically newer devices in the last year or so that have the newest beta firmware, public beta firmware, uh, and then that'll become production firmware over the next few weeks likely, uh, and then they'll get more features around that in the next couple months to more watches. I've tried other devices, for example, Polar has some watches that kind of understand the whole authenticated encrypted channel sort of bit uh, from some of their past stuff around heart rate rebroadcasting, but those didn't work with this on the secure side. It would initially pair and showed me as paired, but once it actually showed the data stream, it just had a flat line 30 beats per second, which seems to be what Garmin is using to basically say, hey, this is a valid pairing, but invalid encryption. Of course, I'm sure over the next few months, you're gonna see a bunch of companies adopt the pre-existing standard. This is not a Garmin unique thing. The uh, standard for Bluetooth authentication encryption has been around for many, many years. Uh, it's just a matter of companies starting to use it. Okay, now before we get into the accuracy bits here, let me just explain the difference between this strap and the HRM Pro Series, as well as the HRM Fit Series. So these two straps from like a technical standpoint over here are essentially the same. They're mechanically different. The HRM Fit is designed for women to clip onto the bottom of their sports bra there. Uh, I have a separate video up on that in the corner there. Uh, but the HRM Pro, HRM Pro Plus series uh, is essentially designed as Garmin's high-end advanced strap. The key difference between those higher end straps and the HRM 200 is this essentially just transmits your heart rate data and HRV. Versus the HRM Pro series and HRM Fit straps transmit a bunch of additional running dynamics data as well as have storage on board for things like swimming uh, or sports where you can't wear your watch. For example, football, you may want to have the strap on uh, and then basically it'll sync that data after your workout to the watch. Uh, additionally, the strap can sync the data directly to the Garmin Connect app. Well, this can talk to the Garmin Connect app uh, in terms of like settings and stuff like that. Uh, it won't offload your data from the strap to the watch because there's no storage on this uh, from a device standpoint. In any case, I've listed all the differences down below there. So then when you compare something like this here to the older HRM Dual that's 20 bucks cheaper, from a basic data standpoint, they're sending the exact same thing with the exact same level of really good accuracy. Uh, the only difference is going to be that this has the button and the encryption capabilities going forward, which may make it more future-proof in the future. I guess that's obvious, but either way, future-proof down the road uh, versus this uh, may eventually run into some limitations down the road. But I don't foresee that anytime soon, certainly not in the next like two to three years of real-world usage. Uh, all those existing devices and watches and stuff like that will for many, many years. You got to go ahead and receive data from Bluetooth as well as AMP+. Plus. The EU directive doesn't limit that. It's more about that transmission side than the receiving side. So then let's look at the accuracy bit. Uh, no matter what device it is, I always do accuracy testing because you'd be surprised how often companies screw this kind of stuff up. Uh, I've been testing with a bunch of different comparative sensors that you see right there on every single workout. I've created a silly amount of data for every single workout. So starting off with this uh, hour and a half interval run here, these were longer intervals that I did with my wife and the strap is identical to the other sensors that I had there. These are all relatively speaking trusted sensors, which isn't to say that trusted sensors don't make mistakes. In fact, they 
they do, as you'll see here. Uh, but the key is if you have enough sensors, you can eventually figure out which one's making a mistake and which ones are right. Point being, though, the data is flawless there. So then we switch to some hill repeats. Hill repeats are really interesting, both from the uphill standpoint in terms of how quickly uh, it basically adapts to your higher heart rate, as well as more importantly, the downhill piece to ensure the device doesn't have so-called cadence lock, where basically it's picking up your footsteps uh, and then it transfers that to thinking that's the heart rate. That tends to impact optical sensors more than it does chest sensors, but plenty of companies have screwed that up as well. Uh, anyways, here you can see that it is basically flawless across the board. You do see the Apple Watch Ultra 2 struggling a little bit on this particular workout, as well as the Whoop 4 band. Next, we got a nearly two hour indoor trainer workout here. Actually, it was technically outdoors, but either way, it was, it was on a trainer and it was cold uh, and there was no problems whatsoever. This data is flawless, so let's just get on to the next set right here. Here is another trainer workout uh, with a pretty high intensity chunk right there in the middle. Again, zero problems from the strap whatsoever, matching other straps, including the Polar H10 there, uh, as well as other trusted heart rate sensors, including optical sensors and, well, just watches and so on. And then I also tested the Atrium Dual broadcast to a bunch of different devices concurrently on that same ride to ensure the data was identical across all those devices. And as you can see right there, it was. And then here we go outside and compare how it worked there and no problems. It matched the other heart rate strap on there as well as matched the other trusted devices. You can see some other devices did struggle on that, especially in the first few minutes where it was a bit cooler there uh, and on some of those early descents. But otherwise from the strap itself, it was perfectly fine. Now you'll notice there is no swimming tests in uh, any of my accuracy testing on this device. And that's because again, there is no internal storage on this. And because it's digital, the transmissions underwater would only go about an inch or about three centimeters. So it's not really useful for swimming at all. So that ultimately gets us to kind of the summary and conclusion on this device. This is the perfectly capable device that is actually priced quite reasonably for Garmin. Uh, most of Garmin stuff tends to be quite premium in pricing, but this is priced basically in the mix of things of other straps out there. Uh, and if you want to future-proof yourself, this certainly does that. It has all the technology there to be relatively future-proof for quite some time. Now, that said, if you're comparing this, the HRM Dual at 20 bucks cheaper, um, or some of the other straps out there, for most applications, it doesn't simply matter. Just pick up the HRM Dual and call it done. But I can see how some people might value the privacy aspects of the encryption or authentication on this. Uh, I've yet to hear one single person on this planet that has asked for encryption of the heart rate data at the gym, but hey, now you have it. With that, if you found this video interesting and useful, just go ahead and whack the like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe. And I've got plenty more sports technology stuff coming out of CES this week, so stay tuned for that. Have a good one.